Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Topaz Labs updated Photo AI to version 2.3.0. In this video, we're going to take a look at what's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Topaz Labs Photo AI. Specifically, they've added two new upscaling models and they've updated the Remove tool for Windows computers. We're going to take a look at all of that. Then at the end of the video, I want to talk about a little quirk you'll encounter when you use Photo AI as a Lightroom plugin. All right, let's talk about what's new. Let's load an image into Photo AI. On my desktop, I have a raw file and we'll open it up. Now, whenever you open an image into Photo AI, it goes into autopilot mode where it determines what the image needs. In this case, it's determined that this image needs noise removed and it needs the subject sharpened. And you can see that it's doing that right now. You have a little progress area right here underneath the preview. So it's done. And you can see it removed the noise. And if I hover over the word subject, you can see what it thinks the subject of the image is. And it did a good job. So it did a nice job. It removed the noise and it did sharpen the photo. But uh, the main new feature in this version of Photo AI are those two new upscaling models. So I need to upscale this image. So what I'm going to do is crop it. So I'm going to open up the crop tool. And I think what we'll do is we'll go for a square crop and I'm going to crop away a lot of the pixels uh, just so that we could really see what it looks like. Uh, so I'm going to crop out his elbow. That's probably going to look kind of weird, but I think we're going to crop away a lot of pixels so we could actually test these two new models out completely. So I'm going to click apply. Now, as soon as I do this, it goes into autopilot mode, mode again, where it re-examines the image and determines what's it, what it needs. In this case, it determined it only needs noise removed. It doesn't think it needs to be sharpened. Um, I feel it needs to be sharpened. You can see it is blurry. That's why I picked out this specific image. But let's talk about this upscale um, thing that's going on here with these two new upscaling models. Let's turn on upscale and then roll it open over here. I'll just click. And the two new models are right at the top. They're standard version 2 and high fidelity version 2. Right now, it's using high fidelity version 2. You can see in the progress circle here that it's uh, updating, it's enhancing. So we'll let it do its thing. While it's doing this, its thing, let's talk about high fidelity version 2. They still have high fidelity version 1 here. What's different between them? Well, specifically with high fidelity version 2, they've improved the grain preserving consistency for low denoise um, images. Specifically, if you have an image that has a little bit of noise in it, it was shot at a lower ISO, and you really want that noise there. You really don't want it to be removed. In the past, apparently, with high fidelity version 1, it would just remove that noise, and you really couldn't bring it back. With high fidelity version 2, it won't necessarily remove that noise. And if it does, you could easily get it back by moving the minor denoise slider to the left. So that's why um, they decided to come out with this high fidelity version 2 specifically to preserve noise on low ISO images. So if you like that, then you have now a new model for it. Now let's talk about standard version 2. Now I'll click on that and with standard version 2, they've improved the de-blur consistency. There used to be a blurry patch issue when you use standard. I encountered this a lot. Uh, when you would uh, use standard AI model, when you upscaled an image, it would look perfect, but there'd be a little patch, like maybe on the um, gorilla's head, that would be blurry, and it would be maddening, and there was nothing you could do about it. Well, with standard version 2, they've improved that or at least maybe removed that uh, issue altogether so you won't encounter it. Um, with both of these new models, there used to be a problem with the older models where you had uh, blending artifacts. Um, they've improved that. And for both models, apparently when if you have an Apple Silicon Mac, uh, there was some problems there too with artifacts that were unique to that microprocessor and they've improved that as well. So you could see that um, the, they're not major changes with these two models compared to their older counterparts, but they're, in my view, 
need to change it, specifically in my case with that standard version 2, because I used to get those kind of blurry patches now and then, and it was maddening. Uh, so I didn't like it. So I kind of like standard version 2. Uh, we're upscaling it two times, so we're now having a 4,692 by 4,692 pixel square image. So that's good, but I do want to sharpen it, so I'm going to go over here. And let's go up to scale. Let's roll that closed. Roll this open. And we're going to sharpen the subject only. You can see it's enhancing in the top right-hand side. You can see the little progress circle. Let it do its thing. And um, I don't think standard AI model will do well on this because I've um, shoot a lot of the gorillas at the Buffalo Zoo and there's really thick plexiglass that you have to shoot through. And it's sometimes difficult to get a sharp image because you're shooting through such thick plexiglass. Uh, if you can shoot straight through it, so you're like at a perpendicular angle, angle to the gorilla, you'll do fine. But if you have to tilt your camera a little bit and you're going at an angle through the plexiglass, it's often difficult to get a sharp image. And what I found is with uh, Photo AI that lens blur uh, usually does the best job. So I'm just going to click on lens blur and let it do its thing. And going to take a second as you can see it's enhancing so mainly you have these two new models now i can't demo the other new feature or improved feature they have and that is uh they've uh improved the remove tool on windows computers uh, apparently on windows machines if you use this remove tool you can see it says beta it's still in beta if you used that it would all too often uh, run very slowly and it would be herky-jerky, meaning it wasn't smooth as you were brushing on something. Uh, apparently, they fixed that with ver this version of Topaz Labs. So those of you that use Windows machines, uh, hopefully will, um, will uh, you know, enjoy this better remove tool found in Photo AI. Now, you could see for lens blur, it did uh, sharpen the baby gorilla's face in the hand. I like the hand sharp well, but the body looks over sharpened. So uh, what I would do is I would probably come in here and edit the subject and I would get a subtract brush and then I'll get a larger brush. I'll hit the right bracket key. And what I want to do is I want to remove the sharpening from this area here. All right, so we're mainly I'm not doing it that well because I don't think you guys really need to see this or want to see this is what I should say. So we're just going to sharpen the gorilla's head and we're going to click apply. And of course it has to go through autopilot mode again and not autopilot, but it has to uh, update the preview basically. Eh, let's just say we like that. We'll save the image and I'm going to save it to the desktop. And I'll save it as a DNG and I'll just click save. So it's saving it. And so because it was an unedited raw file, so I wanted to preserve that raw file format. So I saved it as a DNG. And then I could take this DNG and open it up into, say, Camera Raw or something like that and continue my edit on it uh, there. So that's why I want to always try to preserve the raw format throughout my workflow if possible. So that's why I saved it as a DNG and I didn't save it as a TIFF or a JPEG or anything like that. All right, we're done there. All right, we'll just close this right down. And uh, here's my DNG file. And if I wanted to, I could double click on it and it will open up into Photoshop Camera Raw. And I could continue my edit there uh, as I need to. Now, this is, of course, using Photo AI as a standalone application. I could have used Photo AI as a Photoshop plugin or as a Lightroom plugin. And again, I wanted to talk about using Photo AI as a Lightroom plugin more specifically uh, in a moment. Brighter. I'm just doing a quick edit on it so you can maybe see the image a little more realistically and what a good job really photo AI does on these types of things. And there is just a very quick, not complete edit on it. And we'll just open it up into Photoshop. 
As a matter of fact, I'm just going to exit out of here and let's talk about this Lightroom issue or Lightroom thing uh, that a quirk that I get emails on a lot. I have this image here in Lightroom and at first glance it looks, eh, it's pretty good. It has a lot of noise, but maybe it's something for photo AI. But let me give you a before after. There's before and there's after. You can see that it is significantly underexposed. Also, I want to uh, show you that it has a significant crop on it. So it really is a lousy image. It's a horrible image. There's before and there's after. But I did my work in Lightroom. I cropped it and I edited it and it has looks pretty good except for that noise. And I really want to get rid of that noise. And because I have such a significant crop on the image, I want to use upscale as well. So I want to make it a bit larger. So let's bring it over into Photo AI. And to do that, you would go over to File, Plugin Extras, and then all the way down at the bottom, Process with Topaz Photo AI. When you do that, it will send the image over, the raw file over to Photo AI. And again, it goes through this motions autopilot. But look what you get. You get the original raw file that doesn't have any edits done to it. And it's kind of dark, isn't it? So it's difficult maybe to work on something like this because it's so dark. And plus, you're not really seeing your cropped image. You're seeing the entire image. So it determined it doesn't need noise removed, which is kind of hysterical because there was a ton of noise in here. So you have to be very aware um, when you send a non-perfect image like this from Lightroom Classic into Photo AI that it's doing to the image what you need done to the image. I don't think I need to sharpen this image at all. I just need really noise removed and I want it upscaled. So we're going to go to upscale, we'll roll this open. 2x would be good. It's going to bring me like huge, but this isn't the crop dimensions. This is the dimensions two times the actual whole image because uh, Photo AI isn't seeing the cropped image. So it's just seeing the entire image. So you have to kind of estimate in your head that it's going to be as big as you need it when you use upscale AI. So I'm just going to let it do its default settings here and we'll let it do its enhancing. And then once it's done, preview is updated. You could see, maybe you could see that it's done. Um, there is still some noise in there a little bit maybe, but we're just going to click to save to Adobe Lightroom Classic. And then it's going to process and save the image. Now it is going to take some time to save because I upscaled it two times. It made it huge from the original image. It's going from 17.1 megabytes to 97.6 megabytes. So it is going to say, take some time to save. So what I'll do is I'll pause this video and once it's saved and it's in Lightroom, we'll return to the video. And then I want to show you what you actually get when you're in Lightroom. Okay, we're back. It just uh, went back to Lightroom and it hopefully will bring us back to our collection. Here's our image loading in now. We're, this is the original image. As you can see, it has all the noise on it. And here is our image that came back from Photo AI. You can see that it has my Lightroom edits done to it, except for the crop. It didn't bring the crop with it. So that is another little quirk I wanted to talk about, another one that I often get emails on. Uh, to take care of this, what you should do is while you're in Lightroom Classic in the develop module, click on the image that is cropped properly. This is our original raw file. See, it has all the noise on it. Then immediately click on the, net, the image that isn't cropped properly, and then go over on the right-hand panel at the bottom, click on the previous button. And what it will do is it will add the edits you did to the image, the previous image, to the current image. And you can see now it's cropped properly. So here is our original raw file that has Lightroom edits done to it, including a crop that was done in Lightroom. And then we sent it over to Photo AI. You saw in Photo AI, it didn't include any of the Lightroom edits. It was a dark image. We had to somehow fight our way through Photo AI to uh, reduce the noise and to upscale it. And when we came back into Lightroom, we got this image, but it didn't include the crop. So I had to copy the crop over and you can see it actually 
ultimately did a great job. It really has reduced the noise perfectly. Um, it's sharp. It's it's a good looking um, photo. Um, and it started out being really a lousy photo. It really was a horrible photo. Uh, but we rescued it with Photo AI. That's it. That's the latest version of Topaz Labs Photo AI. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.